In this video, we use private endpoints with Azure Storage File Shares. Hello everyone, I'm Travis and this is Seraltos. Do you like the idea of all your user data exposed to the public internet? FSLogic's profile data, for example? Probably not, but by default, storage accounts are accessible from the public internet. There's security in place to prevent unauthorized access, but like many of you, I'd rather lock down access to just the internal network when possible. That's what private endpoints offer. I set out to do a video on private endpoints and Azure storage accounts a few weeks ago and ended up breaking the video into two parts. Turns out DNS is a big factor with private endpoints and I split that into its own video. If you're interested in using private endpoints with Azure storage for services like FSLogix profiles, be sure to check out the video on private endpoints and DNS. There'll be a link above or below someplace. This video assumes you have DNS in place for private endpoints. Also, please like, subscribe, share with a friend, and let me know your thoughts in the comments below. Take a gander at my courses on Azure Virtual Desktop and Azure Hybrid Identities in Azure AD at udemy.com. And check out the membership option for this channel. Your support is appreciated. Let's start out with what private endpoints are and why you'd want to use them. Azure SQL, Cosmos DB, Azure Storage, and other Azure services are exposed to the public internet by default and secured with some form of authentication. But sometimes you may not want these services exposed to the public internet at all. A private endpoint provides a way to access Azure resources normally available from the public internet from a private connection on a VNet. A private endpoint works by placing the Virtual Network Interface Card, or NIC, in a subnet on a VNet. It gets a local IP address and we can access the resource from that private IP. As an additional step, we disable access from the public internet by enabling the resource firewall, thereby only allowing access from the private network. For FSLogix and Azure Virtual Desktop, we can configure the storage account file share once we have the private endpoint configured. If the storage account is already in place, we can enable private endpoints on the existing storage account. The demo coming up walks through the steps to create a private endpoint on a new storage account and steps to enable private endpoints on an existing storage account. Let's move to the portal to get started. Here we are in the portal. Let's create a storage account by going to create resource and select storage account. There it is. We'll create. We'll go through most of these steps quickly. It's the same as setting up any other storage account. We'll create a new resource group. Give it a name. CIR AVD STG 2022 for this example. Set the region. That should be in the same region as your VNet as well as Azure Virtual Desktop. Here we'll leave the performance to standard. That's good enough for a lab. And we'll change the redundancy to local redundant storage. We'll go to networking. And from here, we'll set the connection method to private endpoint. Next, we'll add a private endpoint. Give the endpoint a name and select the sub resource type. We'll call this CIR AVD STG. 2022 and PEP for private endpoint. Although in reality that could stand for a public endpoint, but we'll leave it like this to give it a unique name. We'll set the sub resource to file. All the sub resources are different when it comes to private endpoints. For example, if we want to configure private endpoints for blob storage, we would have to follow the same steps again, only selecting blob storage. Select the virtual network and subnet. This example will use my AVD subnet. Notice if there are network security groups in place, it will be disabled for private endpoints on the subnet. We do want private DNS integration for this. Once done, click OK. The rest could be left as default, but actually let's go back to advanced. Go to enable large file support, it's towards the bottom, and enable. We're using standard storage for this example, not my recommendation for production because of the limited IOPS. Selecting enable large file support will increase the IOPS from 1000 to 10,000. This step is not needed for this example, but I thought I'd pass the information along. Go to review and create. 
And once validation passes, great. This will take a minute to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. That finished, let's go to the storage account. From here, let's go to networking. Notice that under firewalls and virtual networks, selected networks is selected, but there are no networks added. This was configured because we created a private endpoint when we set up the account. This section only applies to the public endpoint, not the private endpoint. It's basically saying only the networks listed below can access the public endpoint and none are listed. Let's go to private endpoint connections. Here's a list of our private endpoints. Let's open that. This is the representation of a virtual network card. We can see it's attached to the AVD subnet. Let's go to DNS. Here we have two important pieces of information. We have the fully qualified domain name of the endpoint and the IP address. Make a note of both of these. We'll need them shortly. Let's run NSLOOKUP on a computer not in the domain. And again, this command prompt is on a computer outside of the private network. It returns the public IP address. That won't work because public access is blocked. And also notice the two aliases, one for the private link.file.core.windows.net domain. Let's run the same command on a computer that's attached to the VNet. The address shown on the screen is the IP address of the DNS server. We didn't get a response back for the IP of the endpoint because the DNS server is authoritative for the alias domain, private link.file.core.windows.net, but we haven't added an A or host record to DNS yet. Let's do that next. By the way, if you're not familiar with this DNS setup, be sure to check out my other video on setting up DNS for private endpoints. The link will be on your screen or below someplace. Here we are in the domain DNS. The VNet has custom DNS setup using Windows DNS integration into Windows AD. Windows DNS has authority for the private links.file.core.windows.net domain. And remember, that was an alias returned when we ran NSLOOKUP earlier. We'll add the host or A record with the storage account name and IP address we got from the portal earlier. Now that that's added, we should be able to get the private IP address from inside the network. Let's run NSLOOKUP again. First, we'll run ipconfig slash flush DNS. This will clear the resolver cache. Then we'll run NSLOOKUP on our storage account again. Good, now we have our private endpoint configured and accessible from inside the network. If you're using Windows DNS, be sure the DNS settings replicate to all other DNS servers if you're not seeing the same results. Now we can follow the steps to enable SMB authentication for Windows AD to prepare it for use with FSLogix. One quick note, at some point you may try to access the file share through the portal, for example, and get a message, this machine does not have access. The most likely cause is that you're trying to access the storage account outside the private network. That won't work because we blocked public access. You can either log in through a computer on the internal private network or add your public IP address to the storage account firewall to allow access. That is how to create a storage account with a private endpoint for file access. One more thing before we go. You may have an existing storage account and file share not using private endpoints. We can enable private endpoints by going to the storage account, then networking. Go to Private Endpoint Connections and add a private endpoint. Before we go any further, be sure to test this before deploying it into production. I suggest following the previous steps of setting up a storage account and validating all DNS is in place before continuing. From here, we'll give it a name. We'll give it the storage account name with PEP for private endpoint at the end. And we'll make sure it's in the same region as the VNet and the storage account. Those should all be in the same region. Go to resource. And here we'll select file. Go to networking. Select the virtual network in the subnet 
I'm going to change the subnet to my Azure Virtual Desktop or AVD subnet. This will put the private endpoint on the same subnet as my virtual machines. Leave it integrated with private DNS. We'll go to tags, add tags as needed, and go to review and create. And once it's validated, click create. This will take a minute or two to finish. I'll pause here and come back once it's done. It finished, and that gives us a fully qualified domain name and an IP address. We can now add that information to DNS. But before we go any further, be aware that as the DNS settings are updated and replicated in the domain, new connections will move to the private endpoint. This is the spot where it's important to verify functionality in an existing environment. Let's go to the resource. This is the private endpoint. Go to DNS configuration. Get the IP address and the fully qualified domain name. We'll need that shortly. Now that we have this information, we need to go into our DNS server. Here we are in DNS. Let's go to the private link.file.core.windows.net domain. And we'll add our new host or a record. We'll add the storage account name and the private IP address. And add host. Let's minimize this and run NSLOOKUP next. So we'll use the fully qualified domain name of that private endpoint. And that's returning the correct private internal IP address. We can resolve the private endpoints by the host name. Now the client should start using the private endpoint as new connections are made. Existing connections will still use the public endpoint. Once all clients are using the private endpoint, we can disable public access with the storage account firewall. Let's go back to the portal. Here we are in the storage account. Let's go to networking. Our private endpoint is there. Go to Firewall and Virtual Networks. To block access to the public endpoint, change the Allow Access From button to Selected Networks and Save. That will block access to the public endpoint. The firewall doesn't apply to private endpoints. I need to reiterate here how important it is to test as you move along in a production environment. You can undo these changes if you run into issues, but some settings like DNS can take a while to take effect. That is how to enable private endpoints on an existing file share. I hope that helps you better understand how to use private endpoints with Azure storage file shares. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and thanks for watching.